about how we are applying deep learning to create SKUs. So SKUs are uh, stock keeping units to uh, clean uh, fashion commerce catalogs. I know that I'm standing between you and your lunch, so uh, I'll try to keep it as much interactive and interesting as I can. So the first question to you folks is, how many of you have ever bought an item online? Uh, items like tops, t-shirts, jeans, or shoes. Oh wow, okay, almost all of you, okay. How many of you actually work at uh, any of the um, online commerce portals like Amazon, or Flipkart, or Mintra? I see, fairly a large number. So what I'm gonna do is uh, jump directly into defining the problem as to why do we have to create SKUs for fashion commerce? Um, by showing you a few examples. So when you sit down to search and shop, you have some intent in your mind, right? And you type some intuitive search queries. So this is one of the famous Indian fashion commerce portals. And uh, I typed here Indian wedding dress. And it is not showing me any kind of results. So you might uh, ask what could be the reason. I also don't know. but. One of the reasons could be that none of the addresses are actually tagged with this tag, uh, a wedding. Now, I type one more uh, a query. I type here, uh, evening party dress. And uh, what is being shown to me is a footwear item. So there is complete mismatch between what I typed and what I have received. Um, and this is not just a problem with one or two commerce portals. This is a systemic problem. So I take the same, same search query and uh, I type it in uh, a different portal. And here I get belts and house stalls. Most likely the search engine is working fine because it is picking up those keywords party and evening from the text, right? But it is just that uh, the dresses are not tagged with either evening or party. Now, you might say that I'm typing very generic search queries. So let's try some specific search queries, right? So here I typed uh, men sports t-shirts. Now, these are the top eight results that I get. How many of these are really sports t-shirts? So I asked her fashion expert and she said these four. So these four are, uh, sports t-shirts. Now, if you look at the second item, uh, the label is arrow sport. So the search engine is picking up uh, this text and showing this item as a sports t-shirt. But in fact, it is a, a casual t-shirt and there are more casual t-shirts in, in the results. Now, I can take uh, a very specific search query. I type uh, blue Tunic. Now, a tunic is a very popular uh, fashion wear for women. And I see these uh, top five results. And if I analyze these results, uh, only the first result is correct. Rest four are not. And in fact, I see some dresses which are in green, uh, not even in blue. And if you see that the last two items are actually duplicates. So the same item is being shown to me multiple times. Now, why do these problems exist? These problems exist because fashion commerce catalogs are not very well tagged. And we saw a few examples, right? So there were a missing tags, there was a mismatch between what you type and what you got, there were non-standard tags like casual versus sports, and you also have lots of duplicates. So the next question is, why are these products not well tagged? So there are primary uh, two reasons for it. A, the uh, tag creation process itself is very complex. Fashion is one domain uh, which has a very high dimensions. There are lots of patterns and styles that uh, uh, keep on changing over time. And on the top, there is no single standard that you can use to um, actually uh, tag these items. And hence, uh, because the ecosystem of commerce is distributed, different sellers apply their different standards to attack these items. So let's understand uh, these two reasons some more. So why is attack creation hard? So I have 
shown here some 15 uh, dimensions in case of fashion. I don't expect you to read through all this text, but the idea is that you can imagine the number of combinations that you can have if you have uh, so many uh, dimensions. For each dimension, you can have, on an average, uh, 10 values. Now imagine a seller sitting and uploading one fashion item in case uh, of there is no standard reference. right? Now it is not the case that standards don't exist. So we have ISB in case of books, we have UPC in case of physical retail. Um, and these help both consumers and businesses uh, to uh, track items and to, uh, and to also search for items. So let's take example of ISBN for books. When you have to obtain ISBN in appropriate form, you first have to enlist the author, name of your book, the edition, the country, and there are several other parameters. And only after that, you get to see uh, uh, a number which is a unique, which you call ISBN. Now, as you can see, because you have these attributes, it makes it very easy to index and search for books. Now, it is not the case that in case of uh, online commerce, there are, uh, there are no um, unique tags or unique uh, IDs that uh, these portals don't apply. So in case of Amazon, you have this Amazon standard identification number, which is nothing but SKU. Uh, SKU, as I mentioned, is a stock keeping unit, um, which is essentially um, a product code that you assign to or unique products for your internal use. Now, unfortunately, when you have to onboard this fashion commerce uh, inventory, uh, this process of identifying different attributes is uh, not uh, followed. If that were the case, uh, we would have products that are uh, very well tagged, right? So, let's uh, further understand um, why this uh, problem is more important from the commerce perspective. Now, I have shown here a simple uh, value chain uh, from manufacturers to uh, users. So manufacturers manufacture uh, uh, fashion items, which are then sold to sellers and brands. And sellers and brands then upload this inventory into commerce uh, catalogs, which is then exposed to us uh, users when we search for it. Now, in case of a but direct e-commerce, uh, the commerce platform has very tight control over the sellers. Uh, so you essentially create brands. Mintra is, for, uh, is an example of uh, a direct e-commerce. In case of online marketplaces, you want to have more and more sellers onboarded onto your platform. But you don't have uh, very uh, a tight control over them. You can onboard small, medium size, and large sellers onto your platform. Now, for both direct e-commerce as well as for online marketplaces, um, the way this inventory is onboarded is not at all. Uh, uh, so there are no uh, standards maintained. And because of which, uh, you see all sorts of variations in your catalog, and your uh, catalog is very uh, poorly tagged. So why is it a problem for us? So we act as aggregate over the existing direct e-commerce as well as online marketplaces. And we want to provide uh, a very good consumer experience. Um, and we want to do that. It's your laptop, is you? so you're getting some email. <laughs> sure, yeah. So uh, we want to provide uh, uh, discovery and search experience to consumers by having um, a very good technology. and. Towards building that technology, we want to ensure that the catalogs that we are on board, these are, these are very well tagged. And you can see that because we have to onboard inventory from a variety of people, we have to have a, a common standard, which we can refer to when we have to tag these products. So in other words, we need a magic box, which can create these SKUs for us. So we actually went ahead and built this magic box. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, a preview of what would happen if you have this box. So I'm going to take uh, one apparel category, that is women's tops. And I'm going to uh, analyze inventory of uh, two portals, uh, Portal S and Portal M. 
Now, when we analyzed uh, their inventory and looked for uh, how many products have missing or incorrect category, which actually means that uh, tops are not marked as tops, right? And we saw that about 15% products from the Portal S and about 7% from Portal M uh, had this issue. Now, when we uh, filtered for uh, unique products uh, where there are no duplicates and the naming is consistent, we saw that there are only 65% of the products that are well tagged in case of Portal S and about 86% in case of uh, a Portal M. And, we and when we applied one more criteria where we say that uh, I'm going to say that a product is well tagged uh, if there are um, more than two attributes that are well tagged. And we see that the number has jumped down to 45%. So these attributes are like uh, pattern or length or sleeve, right? Um, so clearly we have a problem. Um, how do we uh, curate such fashion catalogs? And how do we create SKUs? So uh, creating SKUs involves uh, two steps. As I've been uh, mentioning, we have to have a standard uh, where we have uh, defined these 15 uh, dimensions. And we have to have uh, a method by which we can uh, 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 identify these dimensions automatically for an incoming product and uh, tag the products appropriately. Now, here is a pipeline that we have uh, at our company when we have to create SKUs. So we uh, take data from different commerce portals. We put it into a, a staging DB. Most of you know that a product page has text and images. So uh, text has title and description, and you also have images from front, back, or side. So we deeply pass this text and image, and we normalize them. We normalize them into a 15 uh, dimensions, which are now, uh, which is uh, now acting as a standard for us. We also compute a feature vectors for uh, the uh, primary photos, and. After doing this, we now, have, we now have accurate tags. So now we create SKUs. And only if we find a product to be a unique, we actually put it into our DB. So this is our production DB. So for the rest of my talk, I'm going to focus on this block, where we are going to do text and image passing. So to build this block, we wanted to have a solution where we have to do as less feature engineering as possible, and also have as less reliance on um, HTML uh, tags or parsing as possible, because these two things will change, and in fact, they change uh, pretty quickly. Being a startup, we did not have luxury of uh, offloading the uh, task of uh, getting a lot of data tagged manually. And when we are building this solution, we want to ensure that the machine learning product uh, models that we build, those are uh, properly calibrated. So what I mean by that is if a model is predicting something, it should better be with very high confidence. So uh, what are the challenges in building such a robust solution? So let's say you want to do uh, identification of category by images. So you'll be sometimes quite surprised with the variety of photos that you see on a fashion commerce portals. Now, these are three different products. Uh, nowhere in the text of these uh, products it is mentioned that whether it's a single item or a pack of items. Now, how do you process such images? Can you simply train a simple CNN classifier on the top and then get done? Uh, I don't think so. So let's say you want to identify attributes using images. So you uh, want to identify attributes like sleeve using images. You look at the amount of variety that you have in the poses, right? So you and me can easily identify that it's a full sleeve a formal shirt. But uh, if you look at the variety, so first of all, you have to figure out which of these images you have to parse uh, and, and then see whether you can really identify the uh, sleeve type or not. Now let's take one more example of identifying a category from images, okay? So uh, these are three different items. And we asked uh, a few uh, online 
women shoppers to uh, mark them with category. Now, 60% said the first item is top, 40% said second item is a, a tunic, and 50% said that the third item is a kurti. Now, how many of you think that, let's say, third item is a kurti? Uh, can I have a show of hands? Actually, yeah, <laughs> I can understand the reason, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we asked our fashion experts, uh, she said that uh, the first item is a, a tunic, second item is a, a kurti, and third item is also a kurti. Uh, the reason uh, I'm showing you these examples is because you can see the complexity, right? So uh, if you have to uh, train a machine, what kind of features and where should that machine focus so that you can execute this task of identifying categories? Okay, so let's also quickly see a few examples of uh, text processing. So here I have one a product where if you see that title contains checked short kurta and if you see the image it's neither checked nor short and uh, if you see this example the uh, title contains uh, both t as well as top so you have multiple categories now where do you bucket this item and especially here if you look at the uh, photo you don't know whether it's a, a t or top so again there is some kind of confusion whether to call this product as t or a top so my reasoning behind showing you all these examples is to convince you that it's a really hard problem. You have to do both image processing and text processing. And if you have to do image processing, you have to solve all these problems, whether it's a single pack, um, a single item, or a pack, if you have different poses, if there are confusing categories, and there are some more. In case of text, whether you have a single category or if you have multiple categories, whether the categories present in the title or in a description, and just doing these two blocks is not uh, sufficient. You have to have confluence of uh, these two blocks. And if you can actually figure out a solution, there is potential for uh, cleaning more than half of the fashion commerce inventory. So uh, I think you had some question. Yeah. Uh, so if you go to uh, more, yeah, sure. So the a question is that the product images that I had shown, those had a white background. So my answer is that uh, there are a lot of niche designer portals where you see those kinds of images, where the background is not white, but you uh, let's say the photo is taken in a park or so. But uh, in most of the major uh, fashion commerce portals, you have images which have white background. So uh, for the rest of my talk, I'm going to focus on one problem, problem of identifying a category uh, tag from uh, text and images of products. So here is a very simple and intuitive algorithm that I have. I have here uh, uh, three cases. Case one is that, let's say, I'm not able to figure out any kind of category from the text. Okay, So I'm going to uh, take help of image processing if the confidence of my image processing model is uh, sufficiently high, I'm going to mark that uh, product with the category that my image processing model is saying. Otherwise, I'm going to filter that product. In case of a, a case two, if I have a single uh, category in the text, and uh, if that category matches with what my image processing model is saying, I'm done. But if not, I'm again uh, going to go back to case one and solve this problem. Now, in case of a case three, where you have multiple categories in the text, be it in title or in a description, we have to figure out a way in which we can rank these categories. So you have, let's say, three categories from title and the description. So you want to rank which one of these is most probable. Now, you can also take help of images. And if uh, image has very high confidence, you are done. If not, uh, uh, you are going to take help of the most ranked text and a most ranked image, and then you are going to uh, mark uh, uh, the product with appropriate category. 
So this is the pipeline that we have for image processing. Um, we first do pack detection and then extract uh, the item on the top. Then we do pose uh, a detection. Uh, then we apply um, a segmentation model on the top. Now, uh, for the uh, segmentation model, you give image as input. And um, as output, you have um, an array of confidence score for each pixel. So let's say you have uh, 30 categories. So for each pixel, you are going to get uh, an array of um, 30 values. right? So this segmentation helps us in terms of uh, clearing out the uh, background, which goes back to your question. And uh, it helps the uh, further blocks to uh, focus on the uh, foreground. So here, uh, I have segmented the uh, top wear and bottom wear. Right? And then we uh, uh, take the segmented image, and then we apply uh, a CNN based classifier on the top of it. And uh, in the end, we have a, a softmax uh, module, which gives us confidence scores. The same pipeline we can also apply to extract attributes from the images. So now I'm going to talk about these two blocks, image uh, segmentation and image classification. Now, image segmentation and image classification has been receiving a lot, lot of attention recently because of advances in deep learning. Um, so I have already explained the problem of image classification, uh, sorry, image segmentation. In case of image classification, you simply take image and you want to identify uh, what what are the confidence scores for the images. Uh, so uh, we take the segmented image and then we give it to a, a convolutional neural network. Uh, and as I mentioned, we have softmax at the bottom, which has about uh, 30 categories. So we did a few experimentations. Um, we gave about uh, 2K images uh, per category. Uh, for these uh, 30 categories, and we received accuracy of about 88%. But this is not that good, because if you see the average confidence, so if I uh, take the topmost category, and if I take the probability, and if I compute the average, it was about 79%. So ideally, you want to have this number to be very high. You want to have this number to be something like 95%, because you want to have very high confidence when you are uh, predicting something. So how do you solve this problem? We increase the uh, number of samples that we have per uh, category. And we see some marginal improvement in case of both accuracy as well as confidence score. And then we increased the depth of the uh, network. So now we have 5K images per category, and we have about eight layers. And uh, now we see that the average accuracy has increased from 79 to 88. Now you can apply some more tricks on the top. Uh, I will leave this problem here, but uh, and, and uh, we can also talk offline. But uh, with a few simple tricks, now we can bump this uh, confidence uh, score to about 95% or so. So now we know how to do image parsing. So we uh, have a box where we can put an image, and we know the uh, category of uh, the product with very high uh, score. How do we solve this uh, problem of uh, text processing? So as I mentioned, on the, uh, the product pages, you have title and uh, a description. And we uh, make use of this uh, kind of separation. We apply a, f uh, uh, a simple pipeline to extract categories from the text. So if we see that there is more than one category in this text, then we are done. But if you have a, uh, a more than one categories, then we have to figure out how to rank these categories. right? So here again, we apply a very simple and uh, intuitive technique where we have uh, the uh, product text on uh, one side. We have category on the other side. We compute uh, feature vectors for both of them. And we want to know what is the uh, semantic gap uh, between the two. So I'll show this by uh, a diagram. right? So here, we have product uh, description. We have a, 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 the, a category that we want to rank. And we have a two feature vectors. And then in the end, we are going to apply uh, a softmax. So let's go through it step by step. So for a product description, I'm going to have uh, a 2D array. So the product, product uh, uh, description contains words. For each word, I'm going to have a column vector. 
and uh, hence I'm going to have a, a, a 2D matrix. Now you can apply a CNN-based uh, techniques on the top, and you can get a feature vector. See, uh, you can use a, a word to vec. You can just yes, yeah. So these uh, column vectors are essentially taken from word to vec. Yeah, you can also apply character-based embedding, but so you can talk offline on that. Now, using a word to vec again, uh, you can have a column vector for a category, and then uh, you can learn uh, a similarity uh, matrix in between. Uh, whose output then you give to a feature vector, uh, which, is, which has now embedded a knowledge of the category and the uh, description. And now you train uh, a fully connected layer with uh, softmax on the top. Now, the output of softmax is uh, whether these two entities are similar or not. So it only has uh, two classes. And now you can give a pair of descriptions and category as input, and you can uh, train the, uh, uh, this whole pipeline. All right. So this is a very uh, generic pipeline. You can replace the CNN box by, let's say, LSTM. Or you can replace the softmax by, let's say, uh, contrastive loss-based uh, function. Uh, but this pipeline has worked for us so far. So we gave about a 12k pairs as input, uh, and we received mean average precision of about 86 percent and mean reciprocal rank of uh, 92 percent, which is actually quite good. Uh, if you give uh, about 5k pairs or so, these numbers will be uh, quite low. So now we know how to process text, and if there are multiple categories, how to uh, take care of them. So we can go back here. We can rank the uh, uh, category. Uh, by the text if there are uh, multiple categories uh, present, and we can solve uh, the case 3. Now, this algorithm itself uh, is not uh, robust, so it can also make mistakes. After all, we are making our uh, decisions based on the confidence score and some kind of uh, thresholds. So you have to do some kind of sampling analysis. So this is important because Let's say you have normalized a 2 million products. How are you going to go back and then check whether your algorithm is working well or not? You can't possibly sit down and go through each of the products. So we do a very simple uh, sampling analysis. And if this sampling uh, block says that uh, um, I have a sufficient confidence, we promote these models to production. Otherwise, we'll have to go back and then give more data or increase the depth of the models and then retrain. So let's just go through a very simple uh, sampling analysis. Let's say you have normalized 1 million uh, products. And your sampling is going to consist of uh, a bag of uh, 25 products. So you essentially count how many of these 25 are uh, correctly tagged. Now, your hypothesis is that uh, I want to have my uh, average accuracy of a sample to be higher than 95%. Uh, and you do sampling. Uh, you take uh, 50 samples, and you get average accuracy of, let's say, 93% with a uh, STD of 6%. Right? So how do you go back to your hypothesis and then say that uh, whether I can say that my uh, products uh, are uh, sufficiently uh, well tagged or not, right? So in other words, you want to have uh, this uh, probability that, uh, what is the probability that the average accuracy is less than 93%, given my uh, true accuracy is less than uh, 95. And if this block, if this probability is higher than 5%, it actually means that that is very significant. So I can expect to have a lot of products which are uh, not well tagged. So uh, you can do simple uh, T uh, tests. And uh, for this particular example, uh, this uh, probability comes out to be 1%, which actually means that uh, this probability uh, has 
a very low confidence, right? So it will happen very uh, rarely that uh, your sample will have uh, average accuracy, which is less than 95%. Okay, so let me start uh, concluding my talk. So uh, we did all this to create SKUs, right? So how do you create SKUs? Um, as I described, you have to have a standard for a fashion commerce catalogs, and you have to have a method to populate different uh, dimensions for each of the products. Uh, and now, if you have this kind of uh, product, you can create SKU, like the category is shirt, uh, it has check pattern, it has a polo neck, full sleeve, uh, it has red and black colors. The brand is absent, uh, but uh, you have a 256-bit feature vector. Okay, so this is your SKU now. Now, given you have such SKUs, uh, what would happen to these uh, numbers? So I had shown these numbers at the beginning of my talk. Now, this number went from 45% to 84%. And by the way, this is for uh, a woman's top for a particular portal. And you can also see that the algorithm is filtering out a few products because uh, we had lots of else cases, right? So if text or image doesn't have enough confidence, you will have to filter that uh, 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 that particular product because you don't know whether that uh, product would be well tagged or not. But these cases are rare. So how does it help in the end? You can have improved visibility of catalogs. You can improve your search results. So the search results that I uh, showed in the beginning, you can expect to see a lot of improvement in those. You can have, hence, improved user experience. And you can also use SKUs uh, to uh, recommend, let's say, a similar products. Because you remember, we had a feature vector. So using feature vectors, you can also uh, figure out what are the products that are similar. So to summarize, I hope I have convinced you enough that it's a hard problem to curate a fashion commerce catalogs. Uh, I also showed you different uh, pipelines in terms of how you can go about building uh, SKUs and uh, building image processing and text processing pipelines. And uh, if you can actually build SKU uh, uh, a block, you can hope to see a lot of improvement in the uh, uh, curation of the catalogs. So if you have any questions, I can uh, take them now. Mike is here. You can just uh, speak up, I'll repeat the question. See, in a way, we are now acting as a, a fashion commerce portal because we act as aggregate on top of them. So anyway, we have to have a, a, a unique products in our database. Which, has, which are basically SKUs. Excuse me? Yeah. Excuse me? I need to segment for the top wear rather than the bottom wear. So I showed a few uh, simplified uh, pipelines. So uh, it's not that you discard the text altogether. So text acts as some hint for you to focus on uh, whether uh, there is a upper body wear that is a prominent or lower okay. body wear. So you can also do text and image embedding. You can have a model there, and then you can figure out this problem. But most of the uh, photos have either upper wear or lower uh, wear, which is uh, very prominent. Okay. Um, and one more just small question regarding this is, how did you come up with the training data for the after image you have to classify it into a category? So that training data is something that requires manual intervention, or is that also something that can be pre-processed? So uh, what we did is we did this in iterations. So we initially had uh, a pool of samples that were manually tagged. We uh, trained a model. Then we use that model to uh, tag uh, some more uh, uh, products. 
and uh, there now you know the uh, choice wa uh, was if if the model has sufficiently high score you filter them out those that don't have high score you have to give them back to uh, tag manually can i uh, yeah so so i just answer that question correct so i so i just answered that question to uh, repeat that uh, answer uh, you start with small data that has to be tagged manually okay but you uh, train a model on top of it and you see how do you make use of that model to uh, tag uh, some more data okay so uh, let's say you uh, have 100 photos which are tagged you uh, train the model now you apply it on a thousand photos not all of them are going to get uh, well tagged but you can apply some tricks there and then say that i don't have to look at 800 of them i just have to look at a uh, 200 of them so then you can go this uh, you know you can give this 200 to manual tagging Correct. So, um, no, I'm not uh, making a very hard uh, statement here when I say that uh, a CNN can't uh, do it. Uh, of course, it can do it, but uh, and you can also apply some simple uh, heuristics, like you can do face detection or so, right? But you're looking for, sorry. See, uh, that's a, a heuristic, right? So uh, you can uh, have a very uh, complex image. Uh, a complex kurti which has a, a lots of patterns and if you just do color uh, detection you don't know whether it's a single item or multiple items you can also have saris which are you know the uh, some parts of saris are like very well flowing right so you don't know whether it's a one sari or two saris so so my sorry sure uh, just uh, jumping in while we still have an audience you can continue the q a uh, after so uh, don't forget the drum session this evening at half past five, a little bit of fun in between serious stuff. Uh, and second, uh, please don't set up your private hotspots. The IT uh, people have said that it's interfering with the network here. It's a pretty fast connection, it's fiber, so just log on to the Hasgeek network and you'll have fast internet. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so I have a question regarding... Uh, Where are you? Ah. So I have a question regarding the segmentation you did. So it was a detection problem or uh, it was actually a segmentation problem where you detected the exact boundaries and how did you achieve those segmentations? See, the segmentation uh, problem is both to do segmentation as well as to mark each pixel with a category. Okay, so it's a segmentation as well as a classification problem. But when you have a lot of uh, complex images, you see island of segments. It's not very easy uh, when you have a very a complex uh, pattern to have a, a single segment for the upper body wear or for the lower body wear. Now, it's a very hard problem to uh, combine this local information of segments and uh, produce a single uh, global information. And hence, you require CNN on the top. Okay, but how did you achieve those segmentations? Like, So, uh, you can, so there is a very uh, nice paper, Parsnet. Uh, it was released last year, I think. You can refer to that paper. Uh, that source code is also open. I Hi. wanted to get a sense of the scale of data that was required to make get this classification to work. In the sense that you had mentioned that you needed 5,000 images per category for to achieve a confidence interval of 88%. But how many categories were there in a sense? Uh, can you give me a rough sense of the scale of data that is required? So we had uh, 30 categories, as I had mentioned on my uh, uh, slides. Um, these are mo uh, mainly uh, apparel items. So we had a classic. So we had uh, a taxonomy, and we had uh, 30 apparel uh, items. And for each, as I mentioned, we had uh, five K images. Okay. Hi. Can you? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us more about your duplication removal tool? So now, after the normalization, you have all the attributes. So is, is it just a simple group by of uh, those attributes, or is it a separate ML model classification model? So in the SQ part, I had both category attributes as well as feature vector, right? Uh, now there are different rules that you can uh, come up with. A very simple rule is that you can do a feature vector based search 
and if it matches exactly, uh, you are done. But what happens is that these uh, s sellers are very smart. So they uh, can essentially uh, crop uh, the same photo and then upload. They can also change the size uh, and upload. So essentially, you can see uh, mo uh, for a few uh, uh, products, we have seen there are uh, 200 duplicates. right? So you have all these variations. Now, there uh, you will have to have some kind of a margin. You, so you say that if my feature vector match is uh, between this margin, then perhaps it is a, a duplicate. And there you can also make use of the categories and attributes, because most likely a, a seller is going to use the same text. right? So there the other attributes are same. It's just that this feature vector has changed, because there is variation in the photo. Oh. Sorry? Can you explain the text classification process a little further? Uh, see, the I can talk about the problem that I mentioned. Uh, so the problem is that um, in your text, so let's say you have uh, 10 sentences in your paragraph. And uh, you applied a simple text parser. And you figured out there are uh, two categories, top and t-shirt. Okay? And you want to identify whether this text description belongs to either top or uh, uh, a t-shirt, right? And now uh, what you are doing is uh, for this text description, you are computing a feature vector. You also have a feature vector for both top as well as uh, t-shirt. So now you have two pairs, uh, one feature vector and a, a top feature vector, uh, the same feature vector and feature vector for a t-shirt. And you want to compute uh, which pair is actually semantically closer? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, this. So where are you? Ha. Uh, huh. uh, about the attribute extraction, you haven't talked about the attribute extraction. And besides that, uh, even just for the article types, as you said, you had 30 article types. So for uh, uh, themes and the uh, attributes, also, you might want to tag it along with the article types because some attributes are specific to some arti article types. How do you uh, go ahead with that? And the second part, you started with an example of uh, wedding dresses. So uh, how do you uh, infer that if a particular dress is a wedding dress or not? So to answer your first question, uh, it's not like you have to automate this process end to end. Uh, I mean, so uh, uh, for upper body wear, you will have some uh, attributes. So those same attributes won't apply to lower body wear. So you can do such a simple tricks. And then uh, when eventually it boils down to identifying attribute of an image, you can take help of all these things. Uh, so that's one. And secondly, uh, once you have these uh, fine attributes, you can have some simple rules. So for example, uh, if it's a check or a lining shirt, so let's say the pattern comes out to be uh, a shirt. So, so it's a shirt, and you have checks or lining. So most likely it is office wear, right? So you can encode some simple rules on the top, and then tag this uh, a product as office wear. So, so there is no uh, learning here, right? So, so it's a very simple. You don't need to have learning when it is not required, right? Yeah. Okay, we have a question for one last question. How do you? How do you? So, uh, uh, yeah, I will be available here, so we can tag. Uh, so you can take questions, but maybe I can take the last question. Yeah. yeah. How do you handle conflict between the text category output and the image category output for the same combination? Conflict. So you mean to say the text category is not matching to the image category, right? So there we simply assume that the text category is wrong. Yeah. So th that's our heuristic. Yeah, because most of the times we have observed that uh, the text, text, text categories are not correct. So uh, we want to give more emphasis to image because uh, photos are the ones that uh, uh, users are going to see, right? So it makes sense to have a category extraction uh, uh, from the photos instead of having from the text, right? So, so whenever text and photo doesn't match, we'll say we'll only refer to image. So I can take the questions offline.